Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. Let's kick things off with the RTX 3070 Ti and 3080 Ti, shall we? Seems like a good idea because the 3080 Ti has been delayed yet again. How many times is this? And this is courtesy of IT Home, and I'll, of course, link the article in the video description. I also decided to do my own due diligence of this because I've been hearing rumors of this over the past few days. Now, you might recall that one of my exclusives is that it was originally going to launch end of April, and this was backed up by several other websites. But yeah, it seems like it has been delayed until at the very least end of May is what I'm hearing. And furthermore, one of my sources told me that they're not even hearing anything about the 3070 Ti. In fact, they think that that could be even later than the RTX 3080 Ti. And I did some additional digging. Yes, at this point, I'm basically in the center of the earth. And one of my sources essentially told me that it all comes down to availability. Now, I know everyone's kind of groaning at that statement, but it's not just like, oh, the cards would have sold out pretty quickly. It's that NVIDIA would have been in danger of doing a paper launch. And while it might seem like NVIDIA are not putting out a decent quantity of cards, they actually are. Um, it's just that they're being bought out so quickly by miners, people working from home, gamers, of course. And so it's more, not so much the actual availability of the cards going to stores, it's just that they're being procured so quickly. To give you an idea, uh, someone actually told me that the availability of the RTX um, 3060 and 3060 Ti was several times, I was told, seven to even eight times higher than the RX 6700 XT, for example. And Nvidia are being faster than AMD at putting out new cards. Now, to be clear, I'm not throwing shade at AMD here. They are also facing massive manufacturing constraints because of TSMC and other components. But yeah, Nvidia just did not want to release another card and then have it available to absolutely no one. To my understanding, the specs have not changed any. It's still got 12 gigabytes of memory, the same number of CUDA cores as we've discussed one billion times at this point, so I'm not gonna go over them all over again, but it really is down to availability. So for those wondering, should you pick up a 3080 if you can over the 3080 Ti, it would all come down to, of course, whether it's even available. I'm hearing it's gonna be around a thousand bucks for the RTX 3080 Ti, although pricing has not been set in stone at this point, but it does seem like it's gonna be around a thousand US dollars. So that of course is MSRP and let's face it, MSRP has not exactly been stuck with. Um, but anyway, let's just a quick update for that. And furthermore, KOPT7 Kimi is also stating that they believe, and they've had a very good track record with NVIDIA leaks, that a Nintendo Switch is going to be utilizing Lovelace. And I find this interesting for several million reasons. The first is that Switch is allegedly going to release this year. So assuming Kopiti is right, and of course, at the end of the day, you should take any of this information that I'm saying with a pinch of salt until it's officially confirmed. Assuming he's right, this means a couple of potentials. The first is that Switch could be the first uh, SOC or at least architecture to debut which utilizes Lovelace, assuming that is Switch does release this year, which it may, again, maybe that's wrong. Or the other possibility is we could see Lovelace launch earlier. However, I'm highly skeptical that RTX 40 will release this year. To my understanding, RDNA 3 is launching next year and NVIDIA, generally speaking, will time big launches around the same time as AMD and it would be historically way too early for uh, NVIDIA to launch RTX 40. Furthermore, it just doesn't make sense for them to do it. Um, you know, we're still gonna see all of the capacity constraints and they're just gonna get raked over coals if they do launch RTX 40 with all of these supply issues. It just doesn't make sense. In fact, I would not be surprised, and this is speculation, this is not a leak, I just want to be clear. I honestly would not be surprised if we see a situation where NVIDIA and AMD, as well as uh, other companies such as Intel, might actually post, well, maybe not Intel, because they're less uh, capacity constrained, but certainly NVIDIA and AMD may have this generation be the longest in quite a while. It could be like a Pascal situation, because, yeah, I mean, I believe RDNA 3 was going to launch by the, you know, the first half of uh, 2022, so obviously next year but it's possible that that could be delayed. And it would kind of suck from the perspective of pushing new architectures forward, 
but I also do understand the purpose of it. At the end of the day, these companies are absolutely operating at 100% of their capacity. Generally, TSMC or Samsung or whomever operate around 80, maybe 90% if they're really pushing it. So that A, they've got a bit of additional capacity if there's say a sudden surge in demand for a specific product, let's say for example, a cell phone manufacturer or maybe Nvidia suddenly are releasing a new product or whatever, but also they have that additional capacity so that if, for example, they need to do um, maintenance on you know, specific hardware or whatever. At this point, it's not like that. It's just like TSMC fab goes brr. But now from Nvidia, let's switch to Intel. As Intel have revealed a lot of key details of their GPUs and CPUs, but we'll talk about the CPU first because it's only gonna take us a second. Their Meteor Lake processors are going to launch in 2023, according to Intel, and will be built on their uh, 7nm process. So I'm going to read out a quote from Pat Gelsinger, who is of course the new and shiny CEO of Intel. Intel's 2023 CPU product roadmap, it includes Meteor Lake for client, Granite Rapids for data center. Both have Meteor Lake and Granite Rapids, will be compute tiles built on Intel's 7nm. Further, for our 2023 roadmap, we will also leverage our relationship with TSMC to deliver additional leadership CPU products for our client and data center customers. This is the power of our new IDM 2.0 model, combined with a modular approach to design in Intel's industry-leading packaging technologies. Hey, boy, that was a lot of stuff. And just a quick reminder, uh, we will see uh, Meteor Lake again in 2023. Alder Lake is launching this year, which if you're watching this at some point in the future is 2021. And then Raptor Lake is going to be the intermediary, intermediate architecture, excuse me, which will launch in 2022. Yeah, so basically each year now, Intel is pushing out a new architecture. So they're definitely improving their, uh, well, yeah, basically they're speeding up their releases. And it's a lot more like Intel of old. Personally, I don't think Alder Lake is going to be enough to dethrone Zen in every single application. I do think it will be quite competitive in many, but I feel architectures after that, especially when we start to get to Meteor Lake, could be very, very, very challenging for AMD. I don't think it's going to be a situation where Intel just absolutely gets, um, you know, a steamroller and rolls right through uh, Lisa Sue's headquarters. I think it's going to still be a, quite a fight because Zen 4 as well as Zen 5 are shaping up to be very good as well. But I just feel that at this point, Intel are getting drop kicked and then, you know, they're just lying there helpless and like, please make it stop, insert Homer meme here. But now, switching from their CPUs to their GPUs and by golly gosh, Raja, he's making something pretty darn impressive there. Um, the new high performance computing uh, GPU from Intel is a tile based design. We'll get into the specifics in just a moment with about a hundred billion transistors. To put that into some level of context, that's around four times larger than uh, both AMD and Nvidia's highest end uh, products. And yeah, so this has 47 XPU compute tiles. And actually Raja has provided some details of this. Uh, Raja has stated that these are 16 XCHPC. These are both internal and external. Eight Rambo, two XE base tiles, 11 EMIB tiles, two XE link tiles, and finally eight HBM tiles. And also in another tweet, well, he showed the thing and it is, well, it just, I can't say anything. It just looks like honestly a behemoth. So if you look at Ponte Vico, it seems to be two separate GPU dies and each of these dies has six XE HPC compute tiles and these are all connected to one another. So each GPU block is attached to four, uh, HBM2 stacks, so these can either be four or eight high depending on the configuration. And this will mean that there's absolutely ridiculous amounts of memory bandwidth as well as memory capacity. Furthermore, it uses EMIB interconnects to tie all of this together. What's absolutely nuts about this thing is that this one piece of silicon in the palm of your hand, at least according to Raja, has about a petaflop of performance, which is absolutely bonkers. 
Obviously, this is not something which is going to find its way into your desktop gaming system. However, the same technology is going to be derived, of course, from this particular architecture. And it will be particularly interesting to me to see what Intel can bring to the table here. The engineering, considering the short period of time in two, three years, I believe it was two years that Rajar said that all of this came together in, is kind of crazy. And it really does show you, A, the talent that Intel have working at, well, Intel, and also just the amount of resources that Intel actually have to throw behind this product to make it a reality. Because at the end of the day, this is not something which is going to be cheap to do. It has a ridiculous amount of moving parts to produce this. It's not just, of course, the silicon itself, which, let's be honest, is not the simplest to design. But even outside of the bring up of the silicon, you've got software to worry about and just the drivers and the whole ecosystem around this is going to be extremely interesting to watch. My concern on the data center, we'll get into gaming in just a second, my concern on the data center is that they are facing a really big uphill battle with NVIDIA's CUDA when it comes to compute. I'm sure many of you possibly work in data centers and will have a good knowledge of CUDA and its impact in data centers. So you probably know this better than I do, but to my understanding, it's, it's a very tight grip on the industry. And Intel and AMD are doing their darndest to kind of, well, break into the market, but it's going to be very tough. And it's going to be very interesting too, because AMD are going to be releasing CDNA2 this year, to my understanding. And CDNA2 is also looking to be a very impressive piece of architecture. As for the gaming side of XC, I'm hearing actually some really good things. There was a time I was quite concerned, but more recently, things to be seems to be more positive. The major negative uh, for XE, for gaming anyway, actually there's two negatives. The first is that the software is still not where it needs to be. And uh, ironic, given I just mentioned about how difficult software is, right? It's not to say that it's terrible, it's to say that it's still quite early and obviously not ready for the limelight yet. The second challenge, to my understanding, is that the power consumption is still quite high and they're tinkering with it to get it more under control. However, the performance itself is pretty darn good. I'm hearing different figures, but anything from RTX 3060 Ti to RTX 3080. But of course, that's quite a wide gap. However, that could easily be uh, attributed to things like just different SKUs which are being tested or just early engineering samples. Obviously, early engineering samples are not exactly known for their high quality and performance levels. Let's just be honest. Either way, I am super excited to see what Intel are going to bring to the table. And I'm curious also in the comments down below, would you give Intel's architecture a shot? Assuming it was fairly competitive, let's, you know, assume that there was no major underlying problems with it. What would it take for you to put down your money for Intel? Um, I think it's kind of actually a very interesting position that Intel have found themselves in because like the best situation possible for Intel, the best situation possible is that they have the fab capacity and they have a decent architecture, even if it isn't perfect. This is the thing. It does not have to be perfect for XE. It just has to be decent because the market is in such demand. I mean, just, just imagine right now if XE could launch i mean obviously it can't i'm giving a, you know complete speculation with uh, sorry a complete hypothetical which is not reality but just imagine if intel could launch XE right now how much of an impact they would have in the industry they would sell cards because it's like what else are you going to do people it's quite funny because you know as a reviewer normally i'm like okay this is the best card or that's the best card and now right now it's just like dude does it have an HDMI port? And does it come on fire when you plug it in? Okay, well then, that's kind of the best card then, if it's available. And it's, you know, it's just absolutely manic. Um, so hopefully Intel getting involved might help some. Anyway, I think I've rambled enough and uh, I'm going to let you all go. Thank you very much for watching the video. If you've enjoyed it, you know what to do. Leave a like and I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.